everyone and welcome to the For Fun of Knit podcast. My name is Linda and I'm coming to you from beautiful South Surrey, British Columbia, which is just outside of Vancouver, the city of Vancouver on the west coast of Canada. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And we're celebrating today because 5,000 subscribers. Thank you so much, everyone. It's absolutely fabulous and it's it just very humbling to have that many people that are interested in my chit-chatting about my knitting and uh, I'm so glad everyone's enjoying it. So thank you so much for all the support. And so here's cheers to you. This is a social drinking friendly podcast, I should say that. <laughs> so I am just drinking some Spanish cava which is Spanish sparkling wine. Um, yeah, Don Perignon is for the other folks. I like my cava. But we're celebrating. So lots in store for you today. It's been about three weeks since I podcasted last. It is currently March 21st. So happy spring, hence the beautiful little hand-painted glass that I picked up. can't remember where I picked it up, but it was very festive. Very, very springy. So I'm very much in a spring and joyful mood today. Actually, I kind of always am. <laughs> so, oh, and I hope I don't forget to tell you as to a podcast I've been listening to that talks about that, but I digress. We'll talk all about the knitting first. We'll save the chatter for later. This is a podcast where I share my adventures and misadventures in knitting. It's more of a journal for me um, in terms of my knitting journey, but at the same time, I love sharing and I love the conversation that we're all having. And I love the fact that you share with me as well. Kind of blows me away um, because of all the help that I get online. Um, and just the amount of knowledge you all have and collectively as a group and a community, we get to share that knowledge. So super, super stoked about it, about knitting, about everything fiber, about podcasting, about sharing all this with you. Um, not too sure what episode number this is. I think it's episode number 37. If you are brand new, welcome. Thanks for giving my YouTube a little uh, corner of the YouTube a shot. If you are returning, thanks guys. Love spending the time with you. And for a lot of you, you know I'm long-winded. This will go an hour or in a bit. So if you just want to put it in the background while you knit and just listen to me natter, 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 that's awesome. You might just want to look up every once in a while, um, but that's really what I aspire. I aspire to sort of keep you company while you knit. So on that note, I have a finished object or two. Uh, I have some works in progress that I want to share. I have an acquisition that I would like to share with you. Uh, and then I will save the chatter at the end. Um, and before the chatter, I would like to give away a little bit of yarn. So uh, stay tuned and we'll start right off with finished objects. So this is my finished object. This is my, and I, I will put pictures up here. Uh, this is my Mabel sweater by Coco Knits. It is knit in, I always get this wrong, Malabrigo, Malabrigo Mecha, which is a bulky weight single plied yarn in the English rose colorway. This was part of a knit along, which I forgot to join. <laughs> I did finish in time. It goes until the end of March, so I guess I still have time to join, but I think I forgot to actually join in their Ravelry group. So it doesn't matter. It's my first time I've done a Coco Knits um, sweater, and I was really inspired by one of my knitting peeps, June, hi June, um, who always has such beautifully fitted, uh, and I don't mean tight, I just mean well proportioned, like well fitted around the shoulders, around the bust, the right amount of ease. Her sweaters are beautiful. Um, and she is the one who introduced me to Coco Knits. Um, I had bought the book and the workbook years ago, but I'd never used them and I didn't really understand. I thought it was just a sort of a, a 
any kind of a pattern knitting book. Um, a little bit of obviously sharing of knowledge book, like a, a workbook, but actually it's a whole technique. So I know I've talked about this before. I won't go into too much detail, um, but maybe I'll leave a link to Coco Knits uh, at the bottom here. But Coco Knits is an actual process that, um, which is, I do think it's Julie Weisenberger. Julia Weisenberger, um, and it's very, very neat to, to knit a sweater like this. So let me stand up. Sorry, let me just stand up so you can see the sweater. Sorry, I'm just wearing track pants, guys. But um, so this is what the sweater looks like. This is probably my most fitted sweater with the least positive ease that I've made. Um, it is it is not negative ease. It probably has about two, three inches of positive ease. What's fun about this without giving too much away is how you start. And I wish, I hope I can show this to you. I don't know if you can see that shoulder seam that goes down that way. You start casting on for the back neck and the shoulders, and then you go back and forth. And then, this is so cool. Then you put all your stitches on hold. Then you pick up a certain amount of stitches, knit this panel, put those on hold, pick up a certain amount of stitches, knit a panel, put those on hold, and then you join these two together. So here obviously were some, some increases. You knit those two together until you get to here, and then you pick up these stitches, and then go back to picking up the live stitches on the back, and you start knitting um, do you start knitting on around? Yeah, I think I might be doing this out of order. But anyway, you then start knitting in the round all the way down. Cocoa knits. All I'm going to say is it's a completely different way of knitting a sweater because you end up with this. I, I'm assuming it's a contig contiguous shoulder type of construction. I don't know if that's the right name. But you just start knitting. Oh yeah, you start knitting, so you, you do one panel, do the other panel, then you start knitting all the way back and forth. So you knit around, and then you knit backwards around. This is, this is sounding really awkward. You knit it flat, basically, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, until you get to a certain point where you join them all in the round. And as you can see, I did this part of my sweater all in one skein, and then I started alternating skeins because I didn't really want to switch skeins knitting flat going back and forth. So there's a bit of a color line there, but I don't care. I love it. I think it, you know, the bigger picture, the bigger picture of my sweater, it doesn't really matter. Um, this has been such a fun knit. It's a fast knit because it is done on larger needles. It calls for seven millimeter needles, which I, where's my glasses? which I can't remember what I was going to say about this, but hopefully I can salvage some of this video. Oh my goodness, <laughs> it's a gong show already. Um, what I will say about this yarn is one is very warm, so I hope I last the whole entire <laughs> podcast. It's not pilling yet. I've worn it a couple times. It's not pilling yet. Um, you're supposed to do a much bigger rib. I wasn't sure about this neckline because it's kind of a scoop neck, which is not my go-to neckline. I usually tie it, kind of do an open crew neck or a crew neck, and I've just started done my first V-neck. This is my first. Not this is probably my second scoop neck, and I wasn't too sure how I wanted it, so I only did like four rows of ribbing. I did a nice deep ribbing, two by two ribbing on the cuff. Same deep ribbing on the bottom, a two by two ribbing on the bottom. The bind off that I did for the stretchy bind off was the Icelandic bind off. So I'll uh, have a link down below for the Icelandic bind off. And I love it because it's very stretchy. I didn't, de I decreased as per pattern but I didn't do the final decreases around the wrist. I like my sleeves just to hang nice and loose and it turned out perfect. I 
can't explain it. It turned out perfect. When I blocked it, I thought before I blocked it, I thought it was going to be way too small. Then I blocked it and the thing grew like crazy. Like seriously, it dropped four inches in the body and in the sleeves. And I thought, oh no, it's going to be way too big. But when it dried, it blocked like I and I didn't I didn't move it around a lot. I just laid it down and pinned it nice and straight, but it grew like four inches. Um, but then I let it dry a couple of days on Hannah and it shrunk back up a little bit. So I don't know. So it's perfect. It is the absolute perfect everything. So I absolutely love it. Again, this is the Mabel sweater by Coconuts, um, Julia Weisenberger. So I highly recommend it. And hey, ha very happy with my finished um, object. Just in time for spring because this is freaking warm. <laughs> it's a very warm sweater. <laughs> That's all I'll say about that. Okay, next finished object. What did I do with my next finished <clears throat> object? Excuse me. My next finished object. I'm wearing one. This is, <laughs> hope you can see that. It's a mini Sophie scarf. Like, honestly, it's not even a Sophie scarf. But um, I saw Noelle from uh, Knits and Pieces wearing a little thing like this in her hair. Or was it Kelly? I can't remember now. Both of you ladies. I saw you wearing them. And so I thought I would knit a couple. And all I did was the Sophie, I started the Sophie scarf and only increased until I got to eight stitches. And then I just knit it as long as I wanted it and then bound off as per pattern. And so this one I did on a three millimeter needle. This one I did on a, uh, what did I do it on? No, this one, pardon me, was on a 2.75. This was on a three and a half millimeter needle. Uh, this ended up being 27 inches, um, which is a lovely length. Hey, you can just, oh, look at that. I could do a little, I could do a little choker. Isn't that cute? Here we go. Do a little choker. But I think this one ended up being um, 27 inches all in. This one is 32. This one's a little long. This one is perfect just to tie it, wrap it once and then tie it. It's the right length for me. But I love them and it was a super easy little knit. Um, I'm just using scrap yarns. This is This was my Stephen West um, ancient Arts. I met Stephen West and I liked it in the Socknado. I love that one. And then my other one was made with a combination of hedgehog fibers. What was this called? Shiver. Skinny Single Shiver, which I love it. It's got pops of pink and blue. And then just held together with some miscellaneous pink leftover mohair. So that's that's that one. But anyway, those are my finished objects. <laughs> and I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed them. Um, okay, so going on to works in progress. So I'm not, I'm not going to go through all of them, although I am going to have a whip parade pretty soon because I keep casting on. You know me, can't have just one whip. No, we have to have like double digit whips. So, uh, I lost a little bit of steam on my sweater number 14 and um, so I have sweater number 14 A and B so I'm only going to show you A today because that's the one I made the most progress on so this one you know um, last time I was just about here I had just finished the v-neck which I had never done before um, which is absolutely lovely so this is from my favorite things and it is again I'll show a picture of it but I did an Italian bind off for the neck and that's where I lost steam because I knit all the way down I did the front ribbing it is a split hem so I have done the front ribbing which I love it is just a beautiful lush squishy two by two ribbing and that's where I kind of stopped because while this was okay for the neckline what I didn't like about the Italian bind off and the tubular bind off and any of those bind offs 
is that you have to convert your two by two ribbing to one by one ribbing before you bind off to get that sort of rolled edge look. And I like this, I think it looks very nice, but honestly, uh, my, my girlfriend, my knitting peep Jackie, did hers just with a regular bind off where she bound off in pattern. And it looks great. It looks great. Half the effort and it still looks good. Granted, this is stretchier, but you don't really need it. It's a big v-neck. It's a big v-neck. Um, so when it came to this, I really didn't, one, I didn't want a super stretchy bind off because I don't want it to flare, but two, I just couldn't get my head around converting it again to one by one ribbing just to bind it off in Italian. So I've now made it, honestly, I sat on this for two weeks. Just, well, I didn't sat, I procrastinated and avoided it. That was my way of dealing with it. Procrastinate and avoid. So, <laughs> cause I couldn't make a decision. But I've decided I am now going to just bind it off in pattern, like a regular bind off in pattern, because I think it looks just fabulous the way it is. The one trick I would say that I learned from my flax, which I'll show you in a second, is to do the bind off on the reverse edge. So I am, yes, perfect. So I am right here. And uh, so this is the right side. And so now, I would then be binding off on the wrong side. And the reason is it just seems to look a little bit um, more aligned with the knit and the purl. I don't know why that is, but I'll show you. It could be just in my head, but that's just, I think I heard that somewhere on a podcast and I don't remember which one. It might have been Martin from uh, Knit365. I could be wrong but it stuck in my head and so I tried it on my flax which I'll show you in a second and I kind of like it. I don't know if it really looks any different but I thought I would just share that with you anyway. Anyway, so now I'm reinvigorated. I'm gonna, tomorrow I'm going to, or very shortly, I am going to bind off the front ribbing and then start on the back ribbing and then I just have my sleeves to do and I will have a beautiful sweater number 14 by uh, my favorite things. And the yarns, I've got the navy, I didn't bring it with me, I apologize. I've got the navy knitting with olive uh, silk mohair combined with uh, Anzula, Anzula Dreamy which is, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it is superwash cashmere and silk in the blueberry, in the blueberry colorway. And so that with a navy mohair makes this. It's just gorgeous. I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Anyway, so that uh, I'm thoroughly enjoying and, oops, and that, sorry, my computer keeps going, keeps turning off. And that is being held in my Sunny Designs. So Ingrid from Sunny Designs, she is actually having, I hope you see this, because on her Instagram, she is going to have her bags for sale on March 25th. Uh, and I think she said 7 p.m. Netherlands time, which would be uh, 10 o'clock Pacific Western time. If they're still nine hours ahead, check your, your clock because I don't know if they have daylight savings times there. I don't know if they change their clocks or not. So they're either eight hours or nine hours ahead of us. But March 25th, I do believe, again, Sunny Designs, I'll leave a link below. She's got a whole cute, cute bags available and shipping is really, really um, reasonable. So there you go. That is my sweater number 14, sweater number 14A. 14B, eh, it's on hiatus for a short while. So let's talk about my flax. Now this is kind of the adventure in knitting because this one I'm totally experimenting with. It is this whole entire sweater has just been about play. And you gotta do that. Honestly, you gotta pick a pattern. Cocoa Knits would be a good one too. But the flax is a great pattern, any easy, whether it's a raglan sleeve or whatever, um, pick an easy pattern and just play. Just use it to experiment on everything. 
So the experiments on this one for me, the adventures for this one was one, scrappy yarn. This is a completely scrappy project of just miscellaneous Noro silk garden yarn, which I am absolutely becoming a fan of. I love that it's thick and thin. Um, I'm loving the way it feels when I'm knitting it. Um, so it is wool and silk. It's a combination of wool and silk. Again, I thrifted, well, thrift off marketplace. I just bought someone's leftovers. And so my stripes aren't even, my sleeves don't have the same colors as the body. It doesn't matter, but this is a pattern by Tin Can Knits. Um, you have two options. You can start with the crew neck right away and knit the ribbing and then do increases, or you can do a provisional cast on, which is what I did. Um, and then do the neckline after the fact. I don't know that that was the right idea, but I'm sticking this puppy. So that's part of the adventure, if you can see my two little marks there. And I do want to make special mention of one of my viewers texted and said, commented, said, a hack or an easy way of doing sticking as well is make sure you choose an odd number of stitches in between your two port in, in your steak thing choose an odd number of stitches um, obviously you're going to frame them with purl stitches so you know but make the center stitch a purl as well then you can cut up the straight line without having to worry if you're going off off on a tangent what a brilliant idea thank you for that that was a great suggestion so next time i steak i will do that but um, I love this pattern. It's got the garter panels down the sleeve, all the way down the sleeve. And for the rest, it's just stockinette, knit in the round, which is wonderful. Um, it is two by two ribbing. And this is where I did, what kind of, I just did a regular bind off. Um, no, nothing in particular. I just bound off quite loosely and I've got lots of stretch. Or did I do Jenny's super stretchy bind off in here? Did I do Jenny's super stretchy bind off? No, I did not. I just did a regular bind off, but I did it nice and loose. Then, not sure if you remember, the first time I showed you this sweater, or the last episode I showed you this sweater, I had done the ribbing exactly the same as the rest. I did the whole thing in the round, and I had actually done the ribbing straight through the steak and just kept going with the same steak markings. And then I thought, how am I going to do that when it comes to cutting it? Then I'm going to fold over the ribbing and have this really thick thing at the end. So I undid the ribbing, pulled it out, and then decided just to knit it back, like picked up my stitches and then just knit back and forth to do a regular ribbing. And so I will pick up these stitches to do the button band. Then steak all the way up here, fold it over as I'm supposed to, stitch it up, and then pick up the stitches along the purls. I think it's along the purls that I have to do that. Stick up the stitches, pick up the stitches there, and then do the button band. Now what I'm just contemplating because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so if you have any suggestions, please let me know. Okay, so this was a provisional cast on neckline. So I am going to now, I've picked up all the stitches and I'm gonna start the two by two ribbing on the neckline. But now I guess I do wanna end it here again. Yeah, so I'm gonna, yeah, I've got to leave the steak part open because the button band, I've got to pick up these stitches so the button band matches. So yeah, I think I just answered my own question. Um, so anyway, that is the next step. So the last thing I have left to do, this is so exciting folks, I'm getting so close. Last thing I have to do is, is just do the neck and then I'm going to video felting it because again, Noelle from Knits and Pieces podcast demonstrated how she used a felting mat and a felting tool and felted it, which made it a lot easier to steak and then you didn't have to worry about it. Now, I have been told that Silk Noro won't felt very well and that's okay. I'm gonna try it anyway and if I have to seam it, I'll seam it. 
no harm, no foul. But this is my point. Like, just try stuff. Pick a sweater, pick yarn that, you know, maybe you thrifted or, you know, you inherited or something. So it's not such a huge financial burden if you screw up. Um, but so far, I don't think I've, I've messed it up. It is, it is colorful. Sleeves, you know, again, I don't have any, like the sleeves don't match the rest of the body of the sweater because I didn't have all the same yarns. I didn't have this beautiful pinks and purples anymore. So I did what I could and I love it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun to wear. So that is my flax from Tin Can Knits. Progress is being made. So I hope to have this finished and sharing with you the sticking process next time. And this is sitting in my wool and frog bag and they're out of Alberta, the wool and frog. So check them out. I'll put a link down below. Love that bag too. Good size. This is actually a very good size. I think this is my favorite size because it's not too big, but you can fit a whole sweater in there. It's lovely. Um, whip. This is a new whip to you. You haven't seen this whip. So this whip is, this is the problem about having a knit night or having knit, knitting friends. When you all get together and you talk about what everybody's working on, then all of a sudden you want to make all the things. You want to make whatever they're making. Uh, and so, yeah, mm -hmm. this is a bit of a problem for me because I'm a bit of a squirrel. It's like, oh, I've got to knit that. That's That looks wonderful. I'm going to start that. And so I keep casting on. It's terrible. I know. But that's who I am. And that's how I knit. And I love it. So this is doesn't look like much. Honestly, folks, does not look like much. This is going to be, doo -doo 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 -doo. this is going to be, oh, look at that. That looks so pretty, even, even though you can't tell what it is. This is going to be the luminous tea. So I'll put a picture up there. But this is going to be the luminous tea. And I am now switching from winter knits to spring and summer knits because I'm warm. And actually, the last couple of days here in... Um, in Surrey, it's been like 15 degrees, 16 degrees. Very, very warm. We went golfing last week. It was beautiful. Anyway, this is a beautiful tee, as you can see. Almost no detail. There's just one little section of a few eyelets in the top. You can barely see it. And then it is just a series of increases knit in the round. And then you separate for the sleeves. I'm just about an inch away from separating from the sleeves. Oh, fluff. And then you just knit the body and that's it. It only takes, I think, 500, for my size, 500 yards of yarn. And so you might, some of you who've been around might recognize this yarn. I tried last summer knitting a pattern that didn't have a lot of love and it's unfortunate because I couldn't figure the pattern out so I had to rip it all out hence I guess is probably why not a lot of people have knit it um, but this yarn has been sorry I've got fluff hmm. <laughs> oh my goodness it's right up my nose and I don't know if it's from that because that's got mohair in it or if it's from my my blue sweater but what I am using is, I am using handmaiden, handmaiden silk woolly wonderlust in their islands color theme. And this is the Maldives. And it is a beautiful navy, royal, aqua, and white um, variegated yarn. I'm eating fluff. Variegated yarn. And it is 70% merino, 30% silk. So it is perfect. It is a worsted weight yarn. So this pattern, the luminous pattern, luminous tea, is DK weight. So you know me, just to make life more interesting, I just thought this is the yarn that I had. I am knitting. This I'm knitting from stash because part of my aspirations this year is to knit 
from my stash. That doesn't mean I'm not acquiring yarn, because I am. But I want to sort of, you know, move the inventory, you know, first in, first out. Well, let's start all the older yarns that I've had. Let's start knitting those, because I keep just hanging on to them and loving them. They're beautiful. But I want to knit with them. So this I purchased from Crafty Fibers in 2018. And I absolutely love it, love it, love it. Oops, that's absolutely the wrong way. I absolutely love it. Um, I am knitting the size three. I technically probably should knit the size four, but this has a lot of positive ease already in the pattern. And because it's a worsted weight wool, I'm using the same needles, which is still the same needle recommended for this yarn. So I'm lucky there. Um, so the pattern under a DK and this yarn as a worsted share the same needle size. And I do believe it's a four and a half. Is it a four and a half? I think it's a four or four and a half millimeter, which is a US, it's four and a half, which is a US seven. And just a couple things. I am using, um, I don't know if you've ever seen one of these before, like this, oh, of course you have. I'm the novice. Um, I guess I can't call myself a novice. I can't. I just, this time has gone so fast. Honestly, I started knitting September 2017. And that's, you know, what? Six years ago almost. Four, four or five, five years ago. It'll be six in, in obviously September. But, so I'm not a novice anymore. But time went so fast, it's hard to believe it's been that long that I've been knitting. But this thing, this is a row counter, which... I was gifted in one of my wool swaps, which is so much fun. If you haven't done a wool swap, check out the wool swap link. Uh, she has um, enrollments every couple months. I think March's enrollment is closed now. But um, and then you just swap yarn either within your own country or internationally. You get to know people. You figure out what they like. You kibitz back and forth through email or Instagram or whatever and figure out what everybody likes and then you send them a surprise package of yarns and some fun stuff and I always get spoiled honestly. It's ridiculous but um, and it's a great way to change out your yarn if you're kind of bored with something but it's still nice yarn. It's hey it's a great way to get something else into your into your stash but this is one of the things that I got and it is a row counter and for the longest time I had no idea how to use it. So it was pretty jewelry, but I had no idea to how to use it. Well, now I know, and you all know how to use this, but I'll tell you anyway, <laughs> just in case anyone's interested. So I don't know if you can see it, but it starts like this and it has a hole. It's got a loop here, a ring, and then it's got the number zero, and then it's got a ring and the number one, and then a ring, number two, a ring, three, a ring, four, and then all the way down, and the last number is nine. So this is a 10 row repeat counter. I know I, I have eight rows to go before I can split for the sleeves. And so this is my beginning of row marker. And every time I get to the beginning of the row, I just change the loop. So I am on the, if this was the first round, I am on the second round. So I have completed the first round. The next time I will have completed the second round, the next time the third round, took me forever to figure this out, and the fourth round, and so on. You just keep, as you get to the beginning of row, you just change the loop, and then you don't lose your row count, which is a lot of fun. And it's pretty jewelry. I like a little bling on my knitting. So, just wanted to share that. Um, this is a fun knit. It's going to be done very quickly, I have no doubt. So maybe by the next time I see you, I'll have no commitment, but maybe the flax done and maybe the... That's being, <laughs> that's being ambitious. But um, I am all into knitting springy, summery things right now. So that is work in progress number three. Last work in progress that I am going to share with you. Hang on, I just need to pour myself a little bit more bubbly. The last is not really summary, but I have been working on my scrappy blanket. And 
this is just giving me so much joy. Oh my goodness. I just wanted to show it to you. Everybody has a, I'm, well, I'm sure lots of people, not everybody, but there is a significant amount of knitters and crocheters that have done a scrappy blanket, a granny stripe blanket before, some sort of scrappy thing. And so here's mine. I just wanted to show it to you, even though I haven't weaved, I haven't woven in all the ends yet. But I just want to, it just, I'm just loving it. Now, I, of course, don't ever do anything tiny. I had to go and make this big, massive blanket. I don't know. But I'm loving it. And I'm using all the scrap yarns that I have. All the scrap yarns that I have. Um, and I'm just willy-nilly. So not nothing... There's no yarn management. There's no color. The only kind of thought I'm giving to it, I shouldn't say there's no color management. The only thought I'm doing is trying to do a solid row and then a variegated row and a solid row and then a variegated row, but it doesn't work all the time. And I'm not being too particular about it because this is a scrappy project where I'm just trying to use up. I have beautiful scraps from all of my sock knitting and my, my sweater knitting. And it's just a shame for that yarn just to be sitting in balls in, in a Tupperware container. So that is whip number four. Oh my goodness, that went quite quickly. Okay, so that was whip number four. What else can I tell you? Um, I am... Oh, that's not true. I have two more whips. I lied. I've got five and six. See, this is why I have to have a whip parade. These, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail because they're just vanilla socks. Um, but I have been challenged with socks lately. I can't seem to make headway. I am not... <sighs> it's because I have too many projects on the go that are... I wanted to get this finished. Um, but these were my St. Patty's Day scrappy socks, and this is all done with just leftover yarns, and I'm absolutely loving them. I have about another inch to knit before I do the heel, and I'm probably going to do the, um, sh um the short row. Wrap, heel, don't know what it's called. I never get that right either. The short row something heel. Anyway, that heel. <laughs> and I don't know. I have got a lot of... I have got a Tupperware container of scrappy green yarns. If you can see that. So I don't know how long. I don't know if these are going to be a full sock or if I'm going to do a shorty sock. And um, one of my friends, Noreen, showed how she does a, a shorty sock where she puts a tab at the back just above the heel to prevent it from slipping down in your shoes. Um, and what that tab is, is the beginning part of a toe. Like it's just the little itty bitty tippy top of the toe. So you do a nice trim around the sock, like a ribbing around the sock, something really, I don't even know if it's an eye cord or what it is. And then you do this, like just a portion of a toe that creates a little flap above your heel that prevents it from slipping down. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. I'd never seen it before. I thought it was ingenious. So I'm, I might try that. But these are my, these were my St. Patty's Day socks, which of course I never finished. But that's a work in progress. And my other sock is um, my deconstructed fade from Shirley Bryan. I love this. This is my very first skein from Shirley Bryan Yarns, who's a Canadian dyer. And she does these beautiful deconstructed fades. So you get two skeins that are identical, 50 gram skeins that are identical, and they're color gra gradients. So they're, are they gradients? Yes, they're gradients. So they go from one color all the way to a different color. And I am doing them two at a time, and I'm just doing cute ribbed socks. So you can see that the green ones I was doing magic loop all on one needle. These ones I'm doing concurrently. Not too sure. I still am undecided as to which method I like better, but I haven't made much progress. This sock is trying to catch up to this sock, but I absolutely love it. Look at how now the color's changing. Isn't that fun?
And so my, my vanilla sock, doesn't matter whether I'm doing ribbing or if I'm doing it just straight, it is always a 64 stitch sock with 2.25 millimeter, I think that's a size two or size one needle in the US. Um, and I love toe up because I wanna use as much yarn as I possibly can. So on this, I think I wanna try a different heel, a heel that I've never tried before, maybe the rounded heel. And I do believe Kay Jones from the Bakery Bears has a really good pattern for a rounded heel. So I might try that on these. So that's whip five and six. There are more, but we're not talking about them. So that's whip five and six. And what I will say is socks, while I have been challenged with socks, I took a totally different approach this year to sock knitting. I watch and have watched for quite a while, excuse me, um, a Stitch in Time podcast. So Carol from a Stitch in Time podcast. And I love her podcast because when I'm knitting and I just want to zen out, Carol has a very consistent agenda in her podcast. It is sock knitting, one or two projects, and then she talks uh, uh, about all the goings on in her life, which is so much fun. She lives in the Fraser Valley, which is not too far from me. And uh, she's an avid curler. She's a beautiful knitter. And her socks are gorgeous. She does a lot of knitting with yarn from Fiber Nymph, Lisa from Fiber Nymph dye works and so I actually just kind of bought some of that because Carol keeps knitting with it so I thought oh I gotta try it so I do have to I think it's it's been delivered to my postal box in, in the US but I have to go pick it up so I'll show that to you next time but I digress Carol um, has several knit alongs so all, all throughout the year and one of them is a sock knit along or it's not a sock knit, knit along anymore it's a um, choose your skein knit along and the way that she always does it is that she chooses 12 skeins uh, that she's going to knit that year well this year I had Patrick I brought all my sock yarn downstairs and whether it was Christmas sock yarn or whatever I brought it all downstairs and I said honey choose 12 skeins of sock yarn whether it's Christmas or whatever, whatever colors appeal to you, try and include a couple that you would actually like to wear um, and then put them into these mystery bags. And I will every month knit a pair of socks with the mystery skein. <laughs> my attempt to involve my hubby in the love of my yarn. So the actual deconstructed fade was January's choice. So, not these ones, sorry, the deconstructed fight. This was January, so I pulled it out and it was January. The way he wrapped them all up is I had these bags from the dollar store and he put them all in the bags and then I put ribbons around them and they're all sitting right there in my cubby. And so every month I pull one out and, okay, theoretically every month I pull one out. I haven't done February and I haven't done March, so I just randomly choose one. So let's open them up and see what skeins I'm supposed to be knitting. And I will knit them. It's just a matter, and maybe April is going to be like this mad dash of socks. Well, that'd be a good name, wouldn't it? The mad dash of sock knitting in April. I don't know. But okay, so one of these is for, oh, fun. Oh, fun. The purple, like this leader what is this called this is called this is a limited edition that dragon ate my kiwi <laughs> this is from k zip knits oh this is fun because kelsey is a dyer from the okanagan she used to be down in the lower mainland but she moved to the okanagan and this is one of her skeins oh what fun and my husband picked this this is hilarious wonderful so that's one of the skeins that i have to knit up okay loving this and this is 7525 superwash merino and nylon and loving it okay so that was february let's pretend that this one is march okay 
What do we got? What did Patrick pick as another one? Okay. <laughs> this is a guy. <laughs> okay, Ancient Art Socknado. Wow. That is really colorful. Zoo Lights. It's called Zoo Lights. So, okay, I bought all these. At some point, um, this was a club. This was one of those clubs that I had. These are not colors I would normally have chosen, but I kind of like it. And so these might be patty socks. Very, very, zoo lights. Okay, so I got to knit these. So now I've got four pairs of socks, two I haven't even started yet that I have to get done because I haven't even chose April's color as well yet. So this is, <laughs> this is, February and March. I'm already two pairs of socks behind. Oh well, that's just the way it goes. <laughs> but the nice part about that is that Patrick was involved in it, so he sort of has a better appreciation of the colors that, you know, I'm playing with and why they give me so much joy. So that's kind of fun. All right. On the same theme of what's next on my needles, so obviously those pairs of socks, sock madness. I am, and this is a new acquisition actually. Um, I am wanting to knit all things summer. And I have these two beautiful, beautiful yarns. This I bought from the Beehive in Victoria. Where are my glasses? The Beehive in Victoria. And this is Juniper Moon summer solstice and this is 48 percent linen 24 percent cotton 24 percent viscose and four percent polyester which is normally not me i'm not really a synthetic blendy blendy girl however this came highly recommended and it is um again 48 percent linen which is the the big part and it's Tweety. I don't know if you can see that. Can you, hopefully you can see that. It's hard for me to see with these glasses, but um, it has got a gold fleck in it. It has got a navy blue nub in it. So yeah, gold and navy blue on a very silvery lilac sort of, and it's fingering weight and it's fingering weight. So that is one uh, sweater that I want to make. Looking forward to that. The other yarn I want to use, now I don't have a lot of this, so I might have made an error when I purchased this because how much does this have? This has 175 meters, so maybe it has 190 yards. And this is BC Garn Sarah Tweed. And it is 60% silk, 40% wool. So it's a really nice summer weight. And it is Tweety. Look at this. Okay, hopefully I can show this to you. What color is this? Oh, what, what color was the Juniper Moon? Did it have a color? Color? Was it called something? Oh, it was called Celestial. This is called Celestial. Okay. This is called... What is this called? Very very authentic light gray but let's just take this apart because this to me is really this is almost like raw silk it is look at that it is super tweedy but this is almost like raw silk it is beautiful so 60 percent silk 40 percent wool i am so looking forward to knitting with this um, I only have four skeins of it. So if it's 180, so it's, well, it's 800. I could make a little t-shirt. Yeah, I should be able to make a little t-shirt with it. I just don't have a pattern. So I need to think of a pattern or find a pattern um, for this type of a yarn. That'll be an interesting hunt because it's, it's a highly textured yarn, a highly textured yarn. So you really want the yarn to do the speaking on this one. But anyway, so these are my next two summer sweaters. So I will have one that's super colorful um, with the Wonderlust, you know, the, um, the Handmaiden. 
is it called Handmaiden? Yes, Handmaiden. I guess that's right. The Wonderlust. And then these two. So warmer weather's coming and spring is here. And so all thoughts turn to flights of fancy and thoughts of spring. There you go. Okay, so last on my agenda for um, talking, uh, before I get into the chit chat, and this will be the last thing after this, we'll go into the chatter. 5,000 subscribers. Yeah, thank you. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I just think I get a kick out of the fact that you all... Um, Enjoy having me in the background, keeping you company while you knit. So I want to do something a little bit different. I do have a couple of skeins I want to give away uh, as a door prize. And I'm trying to think, what should the question be? Because uh, this is going to be a door prize. It's going to be random draws. I'm going to do five or six draws, at least five. One for every thousand. There you go. For the prizes. Um... Yes, I know. I have been suffering from really dry hands. The driest hands. So, and what I'm finding, and certainly when I'm knitting with the Luminous tea, with the silk, I feel that the roughness of my hands is kind of, you know, picking at the yarn and making it fuzzy. So, could you please put a comment in order to win one of the giveaway prizes, could you put a comment on what hand cream or whatever it is you use for the dryness of your hands. I don't know if anybody has, I'm sure lots of you have the same problem, but I'm really rough on my hands, very rough. And so I need a new hand product. So I would love your recommendations for a hand product. So put those comments below on this video. And then I'm going to draw um, randomly. I have put mini sock kits together and by mini socks it's their minis and it's 50 to 60 grams of minis in certain color themes so somebody can make, can make a pair of socks i only take 50 grams of sock 50 to 60 um, grams to make a pair of socks for myself so these could be shorties or a pair of socks whatever you choose but so option number one is the green so these are three minis that would make a beautiful pair of socks or whatever you like. That's number one. Number two is more of the pumpkin-y. So these are mini skeins. This one is gray with the exact orange as this one. And then a complementary skein in those colors. And these are mini skeins from a combination of Hue Loco, Ginger Snap, Sweet Skein of Mine, uh, Camp Fiber Yarns, and Sweet Fiber. So really nice hand dyers. Um, the third one is this beautiful set. And these are not sets. I've just put them together because I think they look nice. But I hope you can see those. Um, but this is really a sort of a dusty burgundy Merlot color. And then this has got the golds and it's got the same Merlot color in it. And this again has the same oranges and a little bit of the purples. So they all go together. So this is 60. So they're either 50 or 60 um, yards of yarn. So that was number three. Number four, these are all these are Ginger Snap and one Sweet Skein of Mine. So these are the blue and greens. This is the Lagoon color. The Lagoon, I'm gonna call it the Lagoon. So this is number four. And again, blues, greens. That's number four. And number five, lastly, very happy springy. So the happy spring color, I guess. Look at those colors. Oh, I just love them. I love them. I love all my minis. I do. So that is the Happy Spring one. So that's number five. So the way this will work is I'm going to do random draws. And if I draw your name, you need to get a hold of me. So either DM me on Instagram or email me and I'll provide all the information below. 
and provide me with your deets and whoever gets it's going to be first come first serve so whoever is first gets first choice of of the prize and then we will just work it that way so again your choices are the greens the oranges and the silver I don't know what I'm going to call that one. I don't know what I'm going to call that one. What would I call one? That one. That's very pretty. I don't know. The Merlot, Merlot and cream color. I don't know. We're going to leave that at that. I don't really know what color that is. The blues and the greens. Or the springy yellows. So there you go. So that is my gift to you to thank you. Thank you so much for subscribing and enjoying it and just, hey, spending some time with me. I love it. I love being able to spend that time with you. There is a fifth draw, or pardon me, a sixth draw. Hang on, I gotta find it. I found it. Okay, I had a draw previously, I think probably in December, or January person never got back to me so this beautiful skein is also going to be drawn and this is a sweet fiber uh, skein and I do believe it's 80 20 yes 80% merino 20% nylon and in the lavender clouds colorway look at that that's absolutely beautiful so that is also a giveaway just as my thank you to all of you so we have actually six draws um, and again, first come, first serve, however that works. So I'm not going to contact you. You, If I draw your name, you need to watch the next episode and get a hold of me. And I'm doing that, and I've always done that, actually. You need to get a hold of me. So you will never actually get an email from me saying that you won. And I think you're seeing this, a lot of podcasters covering this off. I did have some sort of spam on my account uh, last time I did a giveaway. I will not contact you. I will announce the winners on the next video and it's up to you to get a hold of me. And that way it's all kind of kind of safe and secure. So I will never reach out to you uh, at telling you that you won and asking you for financial information. So just let you know that. So there you go. That is all the giveaway stuff. That is the knitting content for the day. And so for those of you that are heading off because you're just here for the knitting stuff and don't want the chatter, thank you so much for spending the time with me and I look forward to seeing you next time. And for those of you that are wanting to spend another five or 10 minutes with me, I will go over the what's, what's going on, all the chitter chatter. So uh, hopefully you still have a cup of coffee, cup of tea, or in my case, some cava. And uh, let's just talk a little bit about what's going on. Okay, so Spain, 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 Cava, 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 Cava. It's 26 degrees there right now. <laughs> I so want to be golfing there. Apparently all the electrical work is done in our condo. Yay. And so now the occupant, the license for occupancy application is into the city. Yay. So probably within the next four to six weeks, we'll get the confirmation that the deed has been transferred in our name. Who knows? We shall see. Fingers crossed. We're getting, we're getting closer. It's been a whole year. So we're getting closer. So that's one thing. Second thing is the Knitting Guild. Okay, so the Knitters Guild Association, what's it called? The, Knit the Knitting Guild Association of the U.S. And I'm doing the Master Hand Knitters Program. Well, I find I it took me a whole month to get myself organized. So I actually have 12 months in which to do this program. And you have to knit, for those of you that are new, I'll just recap this one more time. In the 12 months, the very first step is you have to do a report on blocking and care of hand knits. 
I did not realize I had to do it in any specific order. So I started with swatching and doing all the knitting part. Well, no, 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 no. You're supposed to do the report first because the knowledge that you gain from doing the report needs to be translated into your knitting work. Ta-da! <laughs> Don't jump ahead, Linda. Read the instructions. So I took a step back. I got all my reference books and I have like seven knitting reference books behind you, behind the computer. Um, and I'm so excited to get started on that. I feel like I feel like I'm in college again. It's so much fun to be a student. So I have to do that report. Then I have to knit a preliminary swatch, which I have done the preliminary swatch, which I'm going to have to re-knit. Hang on two seconds. I'll see if I can find what I did with it. Aha, uh -huh. the preliminary swatch. This is what a preliminary, first of all, for those of you, this is what I showed you last time. I wanted just to show, like I just started knitting. I kind of wanted to know, well, how hard can it be to do a swatch? Well, I kind of did this and realized, oh my gosh, I've got this, this ribbing, um, I, I don't know what's called tunneling happening where every second row is squished. So then I actually, I thought, well, okay, well, I'll practice. My tension is off, so I'll practice. And the actual preliminary swatch that you're supposed to do looks like this. You're supposed to choose your yarn, and the yarn that I chose was Cascade 220, which is a medium four or worsted weight yarn, 100% wool in a very light color. And you're supposed to use their recommended needle size and then one smaller and one larger and just check your gauge. A couple things. I kind of figured after having done this I had tension problems because I had this, um, I don't know what it's called, there's a word for it, but I, and again I don't know if you can see it but every second row there's a gully so that's bad. So it's like two squished rows, one loose row, two squished rows, one. On the front, it looks great, but on the pearl side, that's where you see it. Well, I had the same thing happen and I changed my tension. I thought, okay, I got to loosen up my pearls. That didn't work. And then I thought, well, maybe I've got to tighten up my pearls. No, that didn't work. And then I thought, oh, I got to loosen up my knitting. Yeah, that worked a lot better. So this section, my last section of my preliminary swatch is a lot more even on the back um, than, the, than the previous two. But the problem is I'm not getting gauge on any needle. I am knitting smaller than the recommended gauge for this yarn using the recommended needle. <laughs> so I had to sort of do some research and a lot of people have said Cascade 220 didn't work for them either. They needed to go to a, um, a more rounded yarn because this yarn, is this a four ply? I think this is a four ply. What is this one? This is a four ply. Yes, this is a four ply yarn. So I might have to go up to more plied yarn or something that is just a little bit bouncier because this is the problem. One, I'm not getting gauge um, and I like I'm so close to gauge here. You're supposed to get 20 stitches per four inches. I'm getting 20 and a half. So not quite gauge. Most people wouldn't have a problem with that except for the fact I have to do color work using this yarn and I don't like it it's too loose and gapy and I'm worried that you will see my floats in the back and you're not allowed to see your floats that would be an immediate fail so I'm not happy so I would use this is a five millimeter this is a four and a half and this is a four this is really tight and dense this is nice, but I'm getting 21 stitches uh, for four inches. So that's wrong. This is the closest, still not on, but it's too loose. See, look, you can see through it. You can see my, you can see my thing through that. You can see my bookcase through that. So I have to look for a different yarn. So if anybody has any recommendations, 
I will happily take them. I need a plump worsted 100% wool yarn. Um, so that is the preliminary, preliminary swatch. So yeah, I have to figure out a different yarn to just even do my preliminary swatch. So do my report first, then do the swatch. So I have to redo this preliminary swatch anyway, but I'm glad I did it. I kind of, you know, dove in as I always do. Um, and I'm glad I did it because I now have figured out a few things and I think that'll save me a lot of trouble in the long run. So I'm glad I've got this lovely yarn now. I'm probably gonna have to knit something with it, but uh, it's not the right yarn for um, the master's hand knitting program. Now, the I started reading because when you're doing swatches, you or when you're doing the, when you're doing your swatches, you actually have to research and you have to research every technique that you are using in each swatch. There are 18 swatches, cables, lace work, you know, moss stitch, whatever. There are, you have to research every single aspect of each swatch. So the cast on that's required, you've got to have two references for that. The cast off, if it's different, two references for that. How to do cables, two references for that. Stocking stitch, two references for that, even though you know how to do it. So you have to document everything that you're doing. And one of the things you have to document in research, of course, is how to weave in ends. Okay, light bulb moment. I have been knitting for six years. I did not know about the duplicate stitch weave in your ends method. <laughs> what? <laughs> so this is why I love this course. It is amazing. And the duplicate stitch weaving in your ends is a heck of a lot nicer finish than what I was doing, which was just go up, you know, the frownies, go up the frownies, go down the frownies, go up the frownies, go down the frownies. That's what I call them. You know, the, the back end where you see the, the loops go like, like a horseshoe. I would weave in, you know, in one, skip one, in one, skip one, in one, skip one. I hope that makes sense. And then I would come back and do the next row down one, skip one, down one, skip one, down one, skip one, and then come back up. It works but the duplicate stitch much nicer this is why i'm taking the program so i get to learn all these wonderful things and then i get to share them with you so anyway so that was about the master knitters program um this friday uh and saturday the 24th and 25th i do believe is fibers west which is our local fiber festival um, in Cloverdale. So hopefully some of you are going to be there if you're local. If you're going to be traveling in the Lower Mainland, please check it out. It is a wonderful fiber festival. This is the first time since COVID. Yay! It's a smaller one, but it's nice. It still has probably about 40 vendors or so. Um, and it has a really nice range of fiber and, and fleeces as well as indie dyed yarn, tools, pottery. It's got a really nice mix of vendors. So that's Fibers West and that's this weekend. So I'm gonna be there all Friday morning, probably until about one o'clock and then, okay, here's how Linda does things. In order for me to motivate myself to learn things, I commit to stuff. So I cause a little bit of friction because sometimes I commit to stuff and I'm not ready for that. <laughs> so for example, I have just started spinning to the point where I haven't actually really spun anything. Um, I've tried spinning, it's not going very well. Everything that I'm trying, it's just twisting into a big, big knot and it's too twisty and I have no idea what I'm doing. So I have all these plans to watch the School of Sweet Georgia, you know, follow along and I'm going to do that. They've got classes on spinning and I do need to take the time to try it, but what do I do? I go and sign up to be one of the demonstrators at Fibers West for two hours. Yeah, me, who has not done anything to do with spinning. <laughs> so that is my motivation to get behind that wheel, look at those programs at School of Sweet Georgia, and start trying to spin. So what's wonderful is the Peace Arch Weavers and Spinners Association 
that I have joined that are all fabulous spinners and weavers. They're, they're the ones doing the demonstration and I'm just one of their volunteers. Um, I've been very clear and very honest. They know I can't spin, but hey, go out there, show people that there's nothing to be afraid of. Just get behind the wheel and start trying. And that's my modus operandi. Just try it. Not gonna hurt anybody. Not I can't wreck anything. So, so that's what I'm doing at Fibers West. So that's gonna be kind of fun. Um, the other thing that I wanted to share was, and lastly, I'll finish off with a podcast that I've been watching. So one, if you haven't checked out Carol from um, A Stitch in Time, she's lovely, low keyed, very nice to listen to. The other one that you might find interesting, and this is Noreen's suggestion, my, one of my knitting peeps, um, California Knits. And she is very, her name is escaping me at the moment. I want to say Leslie. I could be wrong about that. But I've really enjoyed watching her. She is a very detailed individual where she is doing comparisons of all her knitting. And she, um, so if you like detail, like very specific detail about patterns, about how much yardage she uses, um, doing an analysis of um, similar patterns, you might like to check her out. She's very, very interesting and she's a very good knitter. Um, and, but she's very thorough, very methodical, and you, you actually gain a lot of knowledge through her knitting. So I think that's kind of fun. So that might be one that you want to check out as well, California Knits. And other than that, that was my yik yakking for the day. And uh, it's thank you so much. Thank you so much for sticking around and, and spending this time with me. And I thoroughly enjoy it. Thank you to all of you for supporting my channel. As you know, I don't make money on this channel. I'm not going to monetize it. This is strictly for the fun of knit. Um, and that's something that we all share. We thoroughly enjoy what we do, whether it's crochet, spinning, knitting, sewing. All the fiber arts are so much fun and provide us so much joy and emotional, men mental, spiritual support, I would think. Um, but yeah, I just love sharing that. And so that is the purpose of my podcast and the purpose of um, For the Fun of Knit. So on that note, I will say thank you so much. Have a great night, morning, afternoon, wherever you are, and look forward to talking to you next time. Take care.